Hello, this is Kaylee Gonzalez with MLC CAD Systems. Welcome to today's video. What I have here on my screen may look familiar to you, especially if you have taken a SOLIDWORKS Essentials class. This model is actually from the Lesson 5 pattern lesson from the Essentials class. And I actually received kind of an interesting question from a group of students I had earlier in the year when teaching this course. As an exercise, uh, this group wanted to see if they could recreate this part from the beginning, not just take a look at the patterns, but actually recreate it from scratch. And we got to a point where we kind of hit a roadblock as far as getting these specific type of corners to be created using generic solid modeling. And so the question was, how would you actually go about creating this type of geometry? And when I look at this type of corner, I know that it's actually a little bit more tricky than it initially appears. And my initial instinct is to go into trying to use some type of surfacing in order to at least create the corner. Why this is kind of a tricky piece of geometry to create is because we have several flat sides that is then transitioning into something that is very curved. Not only that, but we have these arcs on the side faces that are also needing to be maintained. So this actually creates a lot of criteria to try to do in a single operation or to try to do with basic solid modeling. And my method of approaching this, having created it from scratch, is to actually use surface modeling, even though it does seem to be very prismatic. If we were to take a look at this model from a side orientation, this also gives us some unique perspective on this corner in that it does actually appear to be a chamfer in this projected view. So it's like we have a chamfer that is then transitioning into something similar to a fillet or into a specific type of corner. There is not a built-in function in SOLIDWORKS that will do a corner like this automatically. So this is why approaching it via surfacing would probably be the best solution in this case. So if we take a look at the actual model, the main body of this is just a neutral solid. If we take all the dots away, this was an imported file. Maybe it was created in SOLIDWORKS initially, maybe it was created in another CAD software. We just don't know because we don't have that information. But if we wanted to recreate it from scratch, how would we go about doing that? So I'm gonna show you how I approach this in order to get those corners to be there. Now I'm going to preface the next section with the understanding that I did actually do some basic measurements on this part and I have actually grabbed those measurements. So some of the values I'm entering, I did pull from this model. I'm just not necessarily showing it here in the video. So let's take a look at how we would make this type of geometry. One of the first things that I am going to do as I start this new part is I'm going to get some reference geometry set up. Because you're dealing with something that is a cube, I am going to be doing a series of mirrors and quite a few circular patterns. And so to set myself up, I'm going to create a couple of axes. So I actually want to create three axes that are from the original orthogonal planes. So this is where all of those planes actually intersect and we'll be able to use those with circular patterns. I'm also going to add a plane which is going to be eight millimeters above the top plane. I'm going to use the top plane in upcoming steps as a plane to mirror about. So I have plane one started and I can open up my sketch on this initial plane. I'm using a center rectangle because this really does help maintain uh, types of symmetry. And we'll go ahead and make this an equal relationship. Now to make sure that those corners are going to be rounded, I'm going to use the sketch fillet. Now I'm going to see a series of warning screens. These warning screens are appearing simply because of my midpoint sketch relations that were created as part of the center rectangle. But it's not going to affect anything that we're doing, which is why I'm kind of just blowing through them. And we're going to make this a planar face or a planar surface. So if I look at this from an isometric perspective, I have one of my faces already completed. 
I'm going to go ahead and just mirror this down across the top plane so that I have kind of a top and bottom of this component. Now this is where I can start utilizing the, the axes. So I'm going to go under a circular pattern and I'm going to choose one of my axes and set up what my circular pattern is going to be. So this is going to be 90 degrees of two and I can actually pattern both of those bodies at the same time. And because I'm choosing a separate axis, I do have to utilize this in a couple of different steps, but everything is gonna be set up and ready to go. So this is how I can get the other two sides. So we can see initially that I actually have very similar geometry to what I had in the original part, just with some gaps, but we can actually already visualize how everything is going to come together. So the next series that I'm going to do is going to actually be the flat sides. Now I'm going to open a sketch on the right plane. You could also do the front plane. It's going to give you the same end result here, but we'll make sure to add just a straight line. And this is a great application of being able to use a swept surface, even though we're not dealing with anything extremely curved, I can actually make sure it follows those specific edges and that creates its own unique body. So with that body already created, I'm going to again use a series of patterns just to duplicate it. Again, this is just gonna help guarantee that everything is really going to be set up pretty much the same here. So at first I'm going to actually pattern about kind of this top axis here. And so that's gonna give me four I'm going to also pattern that same body around this other axis to get the side. The next thing that I'm going to do is one more circular pattern, and this time it is to get these side bodies in here. Now, one thing to keep track of is this side is actually a duplicate instance, there's already a body there, so I can just skip that last instance. So I still have a couple of other items to add, but I could use either the mirror or I could do another circular pattern. In this case, I'm just gonna do the mirror, and I know that they're going to be projected downward from the top plane, I'm just gonna choose the three of these. And just taking a quick look around the model, this will give me everything that I need up to this point. So right now, all of these individual flat faces are their own separate bodies, which is why my design tree actually shows that I have 18 bodies in this model. At this point, I am going to go ahead and knit this together. This is not ready to become a solid, but I just want to reduce the amount of surface bodies that I'm working with. And this is also gonna help create a little bit better edge when I go under my surface tools and use the filled surface to start filling in the corners. The filled surface is actually a great solution for this type of corner, mainly because it is going to take existing boundaries and then fill in the area between those faces. So we'll go ahead and go into our filled surface. And again, because everything is very symmetrical in this, we really just need to do one surface first and then pattern it. So here we can actually see this looks pretty good. It's a very smooth surface. Now, if we were to go ahead and view this from the side, again, we have that same type of chamfer profile that we saw in the original part. So this actually is a good double check and it makes me pretty confident that this corner is gonna be very, very close to the original. Now this is its own body. I didn't merge that body with anything else. So I'm going to do a circular pattern across the kind of vertical axis here and we will pattern that and then I will go ahead and mirror this downward across the top plane. So I can take those four surface bodies
And now at this point, we will actually have enough information and an enclosed volume that I can go under my surface knit and choose to merge the entities and create a solid. There we go. And this does give me a solid body. And again, if we take a look at this, it looks very, very similar to what we had created previously. And if we view this from the side, we do see we have very much that same type of profile. So the question now is, how close did we actually get to the original? Well, I have actually created a simplified part of the original red dye where I removed all the dots just so that we could superimpose these on top of each other. So I'm going to go under insert and then part and see I have this, it says dye, no dots. And I'm gonna snap this into the origin. And right now it's hard to tell that there really is actually two bodies in here. So what I can do is let's change the appearance of the single die without the dots. Just make sure that it's going to be red again. And here we can see it looks very mottled between the gray and the red. So that indicates that these faces and the bodies are really trying to share the exact same space. So let's go under our Evaluate tab and we can take an even closer look at this. Now I don't have any material applied to these, but we're pr primarily looking at just the individual bodies. So the single die without any dots on it, we can see what the mass and the volumes are actually equating to. Now, if we wanted to also see this on what we just created, we can see that I was very, very, very close. So it may not be 100% exact, but we're pretty close into 98, 99% exact from how we recreated this. So that shows just some verification of how close the parts really are to being almost exactly the same. So thank you for joining me on this little kind of discovery of surfacing and how we can deal with these types of features and corners. Um, again, I made use of a lot of mirroring and a lot of patterning here and the surfacing in general was actually very simple. So think of surfacing as a tool. There's tons of information and tons of cool things we can actually do with it. If you have any questions about what you saw in this video, please feel free to reach out to us here at MLC CAD Systems at mlc-cad.com. Thanks and have a great day.